All right, we have a uh, lower end HDS five on the bench. It's actually oh, it's about eleven thirty, almost eleven thirty at night right now. We're putting in some some long hours to get caught up here. Uh, so yeah, customer complaint on this guy is uh, will not power up. Is actually a repeat customer. We resolved another issue for for the same customer for a different unit. They sent in this HGS five. So pressing the power button. I see about 700 to 800 milliamps are being drawn when I hold down the button. When I release the button, nothing. So 7800, nothing. 730, nothing. Okay, so obviously something's going on in here. Seems like probably some part of that input power supply circuit is shorted. Uh, we're going to take the plastic nuts off, take the T8 screws out, take the back off, and see what's going on. Okay, uh, this is actually the next day. Let's fix that. There we go. This is the next day. Um, we we did, I mean, I spent a ton of time working on this HDS5. Uh, kind of went on sort of a wild goose chase, but um, I think it was uh, worth it because I got to sort of reverse more of this board and figure out how it works. So here's a, a donor HDS5 I have. I took off quite a few components, as you can tell, specifically around this section of the board here, to try to figure out how this section of the board works. I've had a problem where the chip that goes right here heats up, and then in return, this chip heats up. This is a, a Maxim chip, so I actually have a data sheet for that. I don't have a data sheet for this. Um, it looks like this chip, in conjunction with maybe this chip, and some other passive components um, creates our 5 volt supply that goes all the way to the CPU card to provide uh, power to the, the processor. While I was investigating that I also found the data sheets for the processor and there's some pretty cool functionality there that Lawrence isn't even using. Some neat stuff. Uh, and In the future I think if I have some time uh, I'll probably make sort of an automated test rig uh, using JTAG on the processor to sort of automatically test all functions of the board, but um, that's my dream goal. Whenever I get some time, some, some downtime, hopefully I can start playing with that project. Uh, in any case, so what was happening in this board here? We'd press the power button, we'd get about five, six, seven, eight hundred uh, milliamps being drawn when we're pressing it, when we release it, nothing, okay? so. Uh, we saw heat coming off of, um, I don't know, I got a mess here, a bunch of components. We saw some heat uh, coming off, like I said, this chip here, and uh, some heat coming off of this chip. And this entire section of the board would get hot. Okay. Remove that chip. Okay. Um, still an issue. We removed this capacitor. We checked uh, continuity between the uh, positive and negative side of this cap it was shorted took the cap out two pads were shorted okay so the problem is still on the board somewhere took this chip off still shorted so at this point what i'm thinking is let's maybe this chip is bad or this chip's bad and, and i don't have a spare whatever the case may be my idea was i'm going to strip this side of the board I'm going to make my own 5 volts. I'm going to inject my own 5 volts into that processor and just bypass all the failures, right? So don't even take the time to figure out where those failures are because I'm already eating up a bunch of time. Uh, you know, and there could be components that we 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 can't um, that we can't source. So anyway, that was that was my goal there. So I started working on that. I have a buck converter here. Uh, what I was going to in fact, this chip is actually a buck converter, uh, I found out. In any case, I was going to use an external buck converter, come off this MOSFET. Again, this is the MOSFET, just like the, the other HDSs uh, that control powering on the board. So what I was going to do is come off the drain of the MOSFET. Uh, uh, that'll be my power supply coming into my buck converter. And that buck converter is going to convert down... Uh, to 5 volts from 12, roughly 12, it's like 11 something, to 5, and those that 5 volts is going to go into the processor. Boom, done. 
So press the power button. This guy energizes, powers the buck converter, powers the processor. Done, right? Well, it didn't work. Uh, the reason is I, I connected everything. It should have worked fine. Press the power button. I'm getting a huge, huge short, like four and a half, five amps being drawn. So what's going on? Um, sort of uh, backed up a few paces, checked again, and I'm, I'm still getting a short, right? So I take the board off. I just take the motherboard out. My short goes away. Put the board back on. Put the display connector on. My short is still gone. Okay, I'm systematically putting putting things back on the board now. Um, I put the the um, processor card because I took that out before. Put that back in. Short's still gone. Okay. Uh, put GPS in. Short's still gone. We're good. Uh, SD card obviously that probably doesn't do anything, but again, it didn't affect anything. Short was still gone. Plugged in my keypad assembly, my keypad board, which isn't just the keypad board, it's keypad, it's backlight, all on that one board down there. Boom, I get a short. So, uh, yeah, so this board was the issue. The keypad backlight board, there's a short somewhere on the board that's uh that's causing a huge current draw on the on the motherboard the main board so i had a parts board uh, in fact i started troubleshooting that board uh as you can see i took off the the big inductor here to sort of trace where the the traces go um took a little cap off there a little filter crap uh you know and i'm getting getting some time into this again the goal here is to get units out so I'm going to save this for another day. Uh, at least I know now, if I have an HDS5 in the shop and it won't power on, when I press the power button, I'm getting about half an amp draw, release it, nothing. This is probably it right here. Uh, when I get a little bit of time, again, free time, downtime, if I get some, uh, I'm going to start troubleshooting this board itself, figure out where the failure is on this board whether it's a diode, a capacitor, filter cap, you know, um, could be the, the backlight transformer. Once I, once I figure that out, then, you know, I'll be able to repair this one. This is another parts board I could use in the future. But just wanted to mention that. That was a tricky one. Uh, but we got it done. I'm glad we got that one done. Let's test it. So I replaced the keypad backlight board again with one I had uh, in a parts unit this is all the parts from that parts board I'm gonna put that back on there like that okay so let's see what happens three two And there we go, guys. The keypad backlight board was causing the issue on here. But again, I learned quite a bit about this HDS5. I mean, I've repaired a whole bunch of these HDS5s in the past, but until you really get into it and really start troubleshooting and trying to diagnose a problem, um, you know, you don't really learn the units fully, so, uh, it's actually good that I had this problem, so, now I understand what this little section of the board here does, it's a, a buck converter, a overly complex buck converter, by the way, a uh, buck converter, which, uh, pretty much just generates the 5 volts for, for the CPU, for the processor. Here we go, guys. I'm going to shut this back down, hook up sonar, test it. Sonar looks good. Uh, 
And uh, this one's good to go. This one's done for the customer. Guys have any fish finders? Even if they're HTS 5s? Uh, Lowrance, Garmin, Hummingbird, any other electronics. Um, go to www.rudolphrepairs.com. Uh, you can email us, rudolphrepairs at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any questions, um, shoot us an email. You can give us a call, 1-800-517-9101. Talk to you later, guys.